Joining us today is Matthew Croucher. Matthew is a uh, psychiatrist of old age, um, and he came today to do a talk about um, dementia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dementia, now that's a big topic. It's the irreversible yeah, decline often, of, yeah. Often, and yeah. I think that's uh, something I've certainly heard from general practice is yeah. that since there's no cure ah, for most yes. people yeah. with dementia, then what actually do we have to offer? Mm. And it's that idea that I came here to uh, try and help people be a bit more imaginative about. So that's what your topic title is about. It was, yeah. yes. So, so I, I thought it was quite interesting, the topic yeah. title. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think I called it, Why, why Bother Diagnosing Dementia? Mm. Yeah. There's nothing you can do and it just upsets people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you've got to have your irony meter on high alert to interpret that. Cause yeah. Clearly, I think exactly the opposite. Yeah, oh, yeah, obviously. Well, I made that an assumption when I yep. read the topic, but yep. yeah, so I'm glad that assumption was correct. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And what were some of the highlights about your talk that you had today? Well, I think on the one hand, you've got to be real about it. it diagnosing dementia is actually hard work. Mm -hmm. It's not usually technically difficult, it's just that it takes time and uh, people are very scared about it. Mm. Uh, people that might have dementia are scared, their families are scared, yeah. their GPs are scared. Mm. Uh, in the sense that uh, this is big bad news to tell mm. someone you don't want to get it wrong. That's true. And if you are going to do it, you, you want it to really help people. Yeah. And, and I think uh, if you haven't had a lot of experience with that in primary care and general practice, mm -hmm. it can feel almost overwhelming to want to do it. Yeah. Too easy just to refer it on but those services aren't always available, so mm -hmm. we've got yeah. to get better at it. And I'm guessing with the ageing population as well, it's, it's it. going to be a high demand. There is, yeah. yeah. And I, I assume, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but dementia is something we don't look at in one consultation, it'll be something over time. That's exactly it? right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it suits that traditional uh, GP kind of practice where we're knowing people over quite a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that you can do in 10 minutes with someone that you've never met. Mm. Um, but that's like breaking big bad news about any of the major health mm -hmm. problems, particularly that older people might uh, have trouble with. It's yeah. something like diabetes that you have to do over several sessions, you might need a double session, you need the rest of your practice staff to be helping you out with, and then once it's done, it's not over, then you've got a management yeah. which is going to go on probably for years that's actually. Right. Yeah. And it wouldn't just be involving the patient, would it be involving no. all the family? That's right. Yeah. And not just the GP themselves, you were talking about nurses yeah, the nurses practice and nurse, yeah. yeah, and uh, increasingly with our uh, integrated family health centres, other parts of the team that might be able to be involved. Yeah. Okay. But n not all in, in one room at one time with mm. one extended family, but over a space of years, mm. yes, this is something to share around a primary care team mm. and to be picking off bit by bit by bit. But you've got to have the will to do it, and, that, and that's really what I'm here to try and encourage people with. Okay. And in your experience, have you seen more GPs engaging in, in doing this? Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, yeah. I think what's happening now, dementia is where diabetes was. Yeah. So there was a time when anyone with diabetes or suspected diabetes would be referred to endocrinology in the hospital, and someone there would see you, diagnose you, work you up, manage you. That's no longer the case. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is right in the centre of primary care business. Dementia is the same. Mm -hmm. It's a chronic condition. Mm -hmm. It's going to take years, not months. We incrementally pick away at it. It can be done in primary care, but mm -hmm. just got to build up the skills and build up the confidence. Okay. And you were talking about how there's no no cure for dementia. Yes. So how would you go about managing, so like for, for GPs right. in particular, yeah. how would they go about managing a patient who they may be suspecting has dementia? Yeah. Sure. Well, nowadays, in, in every DHB in the country, there's an internet-based cognitive impairment pathway. Right. Just like there's a, probably an arthritis pathway or an asthma pathway or a diabetes pathway, so that even if this is an area that as an individual GP, for example, I don't feel that skilled in, I've got that pathway to back me up. Mm -hmm. And that also will give me access to the tests I need and to referrals to secondary care and to NGOs that I might want to involve. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing to say is that okay. there is that internet backup now. Yep. Uh, and the management in each part of the country will be slightly different depending on which NGO and which referral routes do I have okay. open to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's the first thing to say, but I, I think in terms of management, one really good way of thinking about it is, as a GP, how do I manage any chronic, incurable 
progressive disease. Actually that's a lot of what we do. Uh, heart failure, COPD, diabetes that we can't cure. Any of these things, arthritis, can't cure them. So what do we offer people? Well, I think we offer people, first of all, a diagnosis so they know what they're up against and can plan ahead and understand it. We offer support, don't we? And, and not just that kind of emotional, personal support, but practical support. So needs assessment and service coordination. We need to be offering people with dementia all the services that they can access where they live to help them get by and the people that care for them. And probably, if there's one thing that we should always do, it's refer on to the Alzheimer's Society in our local area mm -hmm. because they can provide the kind of education and support and over the years back up to the family and to the person that a GP probably can't manage. So those would be my key things. Make the diagnosis, get the right services in, which GPs unlock, and refer to a, a, the key NGO. And of course right. there'd be other things like um, advanced care plans and stuff like that that they need Absolutely. to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the common questions that I would, I guess, families would be asking is, if, is there a cure out there for dementia? Mm -hmm. Do you know of any latest research or anything yeah. that, that, that might be looking at that? Well, I think what, what families uh, need to know is that Although dementia is a simple word, it, it, it's mm, like an it's umbrella right, term yeah. and there are probably nearly 80 diseases that can cause it in yeah. humans. So when we talk about oh. a cure for dementia, we're probably chasing after something that isn't there. Yeah. But when we're talking about a cure maybe for some of the diseases underneath it, yeah. that is the common ones like Alzheimer's. Like Alzheimer's yeah. disease, like a, a poor blood supply, dementia's vascular, vascular dementia, yeah. that's right. Okay. And I think uh, for most of them, it would be fair to say that we still don't have a cure. And in mm -hmm. fact, we don't even have disease modifying treatments. Oh, That's right. true. Okay. But for some, we do. And we've got to detect and manage those. Mm -hmm. Alcohol related dementia. If you stop drinking, mm -hmm. your brain actually gets a bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some of the vitamin related deficiency dementias like B12 and B B1, we can do something about them. Oh, right. But they're okay. rare. Yeah. yeah. So they're rare. Yeah. And then there's some other things like dancing or doing Sudoku or something like that I was reading about can help train the brain into... But, uh, yeah. I think GPs and, and the general population know mm. that if, if you don't use it, you lose it. You lose it. And this isn't just your ability to walk down the block or climb a set of stairs or yeah. swim a length of a pool. Mm. It's also mental abilities. Mm. Um, but I think there are still a lot of myths around that and um, people want to know should they take up crosswords or Sudoku yeah, or... Yeah, that's the common questions we seem to get. A actually our yeah. brains were designed for social interaction, mm -hmm. Kerry, not, not doing crosswords. So yeah. actually just having a rich, full life of people mm. is your key way of keeping mentally mm -hmm. active. Mm. Uh, but isn't it a pity that some of our older people in this country have their relationships getting less and less and less mm. so that loneliness is a significant yeah, that's problem. that's very true. It's that's no good true. for your brain. No, no, it's not. Mm. Okay, all right. Well, um, I'd like to thank you for your time, Matthew, and coming in and talking to us today about dementia. I, I realise it's a very, very big topic. As you said, it's an umbrella term, isn't it? And we could be here forever talking about the different types of dementia, Alzheimer's and vascular and, and what we can do for that. But I think the key thing that you're trying to do at this conference is try to encourage GPs to take on that role yeah. of being the carer for yeah. People with dementia. Does that right. sound about yeah. right? To yeah. engage with the pathways yeah. and give it a go. Yeah. Yep. And as you said, it's a it's a long progression. So getting them involved yep. early. Mm. Yeah. And then help helping them throughout those stages. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Is there any key stages that um, you would um, emphasise? Like we were talking about the um, advanced care plans and things like that. It's like terms of safety and stuff like that. Do you know or? that for me the key thing is the beginning. The beginning. It's making yeah. the diagnosis. Yeah. Because it is going to happen at some point. And every person in New Zealand who develops dementia, who goes on with it for several years, will be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather they were diagnosed early yeah. than in the moderate to late stages, mm -hmm. when it's really hard to intervene for them and for their families mm -hmm. in a more effective way. Often we're just talking about which level of residential care do you now need. Yeah, yeah it's a bit it later just feels in the process, a bit sad, isn't you know? it? It's yeah. so earlier, yeah. that's the key. Yeah. And as you see, it takes a long time, doesn't it, to yep. make that diagnosis, it so starting yep. early. Is there any key um, sort of clues that, that GPs can look into with diagnosing early? 
Well, I think everyone accepts. Uh, I think the, the general population also understand that if you have a dementia yourself, you might not always be so it's aware of it. Yeah, so it's usually family. That it's bring others. Up, it? Yeah, it's yeah. family, friends, neighbours. Mm. Uh, and I think in a 10 minute session you can't get more than a snapshot picture mm. so you have to use one of those sessions or your practice has to somehow uh, with the permission of the person access a collateral source of information to summarize it mm. and say whether Houston we have a problem or not and, and people know yeah. Uh, so it's harnessing that rather than thinking it all can be or, or should be done in the clinic face to face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So most of the cognitive impairment pathways have suggestions for primary care practices about how to do that. Okay. And you can find that online as you, you can, were saying. Absolutely okay. online. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. It was great talking to you. Thank you very Thank much. You for coming Good in to be today. Here. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks.